In September 2017, a chilling and perplexing series of events unfolded in a quiet community that would leave its residents in shock and disbelief. What began as a seemingly routine missing persons case would evolve into a harrowing tale of love, betrayal, and tragedy. Once upon a time, on a sunny Tuesday in September 2017, a young woman named Laura Wallen woke up in her cozy home in Olney, Maryland. She was 31 years old and had a job she loved teaching at Wilda Lake High School. She was so good at her job that she had been named Teacher of the Year just the year before. Laura had been working hard to get ready for the new school year. She spent weeks preparing her classroom for her students. She was excited for the new school term, but something strange happened on that fateful day. Laura didn't show up for work, and that got everyone worried. Her family, especially her parents, began to worry when they got a call from her boss saying she hadn't come to school. You see, Laura was never the type to miss work, especially on the first day of school. She was passionate about teaching, and her students loved her. So when Laura's family got that call, they knew something was very wrong. They decided to call the police and report her missing. The police decided to go check on Laura at her home. When they arrived, they found her house looking normal, with no signs of trouble. It was puzzling. Where could she be? What made Laura's disappearance even more concerning was that she was four months pregnant. The police needed to find her fast. They reached out to her boyfriend, Tyler Tessier, hoping he might have some answers. But Tyler told them he didn't know where Laura was. A frantic search began. Laura's black Ford Escape was found parked in an apartment complex near the high school where she worked. Volunteers gathered in Howard and Montgomery counties, handing out flyers with Laura's picture and posting missing posters everywhere they could. Tyler and Laura's parents even went on TV to ask for help and offer a reward. Did anyone know where Laura was? Tyler, desperate to find Laura, spoke at the news conference he pleaded with the public to share any information they had. He loved Laura deeply and was worried sick about her, he said. Laura, if you are listening, it doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter what type of trouble. There's nothing we can't fix together. There are so many people, so many people that miss you. So many people who are out, who haven't slept. We haven't eaten. We are just looking or praying that you are safe. But even as Tyler was pleading for help, the police and Laura's family began to suspect that he might be hiding something, that he might have had something to do with Laura's disappearance. The police had noticed some inconsistencies in what he was saying. And the decision to let Tyler speak at the news conference was a strategy to try and gather more information. At that point, Laura was still considered a missing person. Nobody knew what had happened to her or where she was. But as the investigation continued, Tyler started revealing some disturbing information that raised even more questions. He told the police that Laura had asked him for help. According to Tyler, Laura wanted to disappear because she was pregnant with a student's baby and she was scared and embarrassed. She didn't want anyone to find out. However, just two days after that news conference, everything changed. On September 13, 2017, Laura went from being a missing person to a murder victim. The police had received a tip that led them to a secluded field in Damascus, Maryland. It was an area Tyler was known to visit, and they discovered freshly dug ground in a hidden part of a field. With the help of specially trained dogs, they made a horrifying discovery Laura's body buried in a shallow grave. An autopsy later revealed that she had been shot in the back of the head. This was a heartbreaking and gruesome turn of events, and the police now faced the daunting task of figuring out when she had died, who had killed her, and why. The discovery of Laura's body marked a dark and tragic chapter in this story, and it was clear that there was much more to unravel. Laura's family, still grappling with the shock of her disappearance, now had to come to terms with the devastating reality of her murder. The search for answers had just begun. The police considered Tyler as a person of interest in the case, 
because they believed he was the last known individual to have seen Laura alive. This suspicion stemmed from the inconsistencies in the various accounts he provided regarding his whereabouts and actions during the relevant time period. The police had evidence suggesting that Laura was alive on September 1st, as her family had seen her that day. The following day, September 2nd, Laura went on an excursion with Tyler. During this time, Laura sent a text message to her sister, informing her about the adventure Tyler had taken her on. The message read as follows, Tyler has me on an adventure in the country. Not sure why, but it's for something, waiting in a field. An important clue emerged when the police investigated Laura's financial transactions. They discovered that the last transaction on Laura's debit card occurred at a Safeway grocery store near her only residence on the evening of September 2nd, between 8.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. What made this discovery significant was that surveillance footage from the grocery store revealed that Laura wasn't alone during this transaction. Tyler was seen with her. This information heightened the police's interest in Tyler as they worked to piece together the events leading up to Laura's disappearance and subsequent death. But why would Tyler want Laura dead? The answer lay in the complicated relationship between them and the hidden life Tyler had been leading. Tyler and Laura had been in an on-again, off-again relationship for a decade. Every time they broke up, they somehow found their way back to each other. Their love was tumultuous, and it had its ups and downs. But Laura had been looking forward to starting a family with Tyler, unaware of the dark secrets he was harboring. Unbeknownst to Laura, during one of their breaks, Tyler had started dating another woman, a fellow teacher, back in 2012. He had even moved in with her while still involved with Laura. Neither woman knew about the other, and Tyler managed to keep this double life hidden. When Laura discovered she was pregnant with Tyler's child, her father, Mark Wallen, confronted Tyler about his intentions. He was aware of the on-again, off-again nature of Laura and Tyler's relationship, and there had been rumors of another woman at one point. Tyler assured Mark, that he would take care of Laura, even showing him an engagement ring and claiming he planned to propose. He also told Mark that he hadn't seen the other woman in two years. However, it would later come to light that the ring Tyler had shown Mark was used to propose to the other woman, not Laura. The other woman had said yes, and their wedding was scheduled just a month after Laura was due to give birth to Tyler's child. Both Laura and the other woman believed they were in exclusive relationships with Tyler. But the truth was far more complicated. It appeared that Laura might have discovered Tyler's deception shortly before her death. She sent a text message to the other woman on August 28, 2017, seeking a meeting to clear up some things. In her message, she made it clear that she wasn't looking for a confrontation, but wanted answers. The police believed that within days of sending that message, Tyler began planning Laura's murder. He seemed to have convinced the other woman that Laura was unstable and stalking him. When the other woman received Laura's text, she informed Tyler, who responded with a chilling message, I could literally kill her. Initially, Tyler denied any involvement with anyone other than Laura when questioned by the police. However, when confronted with evidence to the contrary, he eventually admitted to his double life. The police believed that Tyler brought Laura to a remote location with the intention of killing her to silence her and protect his secret life. Laura believed she was going to view some land that Tyler wanted to purchase, but the reality was far more sinister. The location he chose was a field near a farm where he worked a place he knew well. Laura's sister had asked her to take a picture during the trip, and Laura had obliged. The police would later match that picture to the location where her lifeless body was discovered. Tyler had taken her to that spot twice, once on September 2, 2017, and again the following day. The police believed that Tyler shot Laura on September 3, 2017. Tyler's actions after the murder were calculated and disturbing. He texted a friend on the same day, asking for a ride to Baltimore late at night, but the friend declined, advising against such a late night trip. Tyler's response was chilling. It probably is. Just trying to clean up a mess. For the prosecutors, 
Tyler Tessier's actions were clear evidence of premeditated murder. They believed that his careful planning and choice of location indicated that he had intended to kill Laura to protect his secrets. The trial was meant to provide closure and justice for Laura's family, but the truth would remain elusive. The shocking and tragic tale of Laura Wallen and Tyler Tessier was far from over. As the case approached its climax in the courtroom, a sudden and unexpected turn of events would leave everyone stunned, and the pursuit of justice would take a different path. Detectives believed that after Tyler shot Laura to death, he took steps to conceal evidence and create doubt about the paternity of Laura's baby through text messages sent to her family members. He used Laura's phone to send a message to her sister, which said, I'm about 95% sure Tyler isn't the father. I'm going to try to contact Antoine. Laura's sister found this text confusing. She had a close relationship with Laura and knew that if Laura had any doubts about the baby's paternity, she wouldn't discuss it in a text message. She informed the police that Laura had dated someone named Antoine about two years before her death, but hadn't had any contact with him since then. Tyler was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, as well as obstruction of justice, tampering with evidence, and making false statements. He faced only one murder charge due to Maryland law, which stipulates that the child must be viable outside the womb for additional charges. Initially, when questioned by the police, Tyler denied any involvement or knowledge of what happened to Laura. However, he later provided multiple conflicting accounts of the events. He first claimed that during a heated argument on September 4, Laura became extremely upset and attacked him with scissors, causing her to fall and seemingly die after hitting a porch post. Believing she was dead, Tyler buried her in a field. When questioned about the gunshot wound revealed in the autopsy, he stated that he was worried he might have buried her alive and returned to shoot her to ensure she was dead and wouldn't suffer. Later, Tyler changed his story, telling the police that African-American men had entered Laura's home and abducted them. He claimed that they forced them to drive to Damascus, where Laura was shot. When asked why he wasn't shot, Tyler said he begged the men to let him go. The prosecution was confident in their case, asserting that Tyler was responsible for Laura's death. They argued that Tyler, who had been living a double life for years, felt that his secret was about to be exposed because Laura had discovered the truth. After Laura contacted the other woman involved with Tyler, he allegedly planned Laura's murder. Tyler was supposed to spend the weekend of September 2 end with the other woman in Pennsylvania, supposedly to look at bridesmaids' dresses. Instead, he claimed he couldn't go due to a knee injury from walking her dog, which turned out to be a lie. He arranged to meet Laura and took her to a remote field in Damascus, Montgomery County. The prosecution contended that the murder had been premeditated, evident from the isolated location where Laura was killed and buried. They wanted to take the jury to this remote location to demonstrate the extent of its seclusion and the planning involved. This visit would require four-wheel drives to navigate off-road terrain, ascend a curved hill, and descend to the corner of a grassy field, illustrating the location's remoteness and hidden nature, supporting their argument of premeditation. They also aimed to show the jury K.S. Cuts, an animal processing facility near the field. Prosecutors believed Tyler used a skid loader on the property to dig a shallow grave for Laura's body. Laura's front license plate and cell phone were discovered in a dumpster on the property. The prosecution was concerned that photographs alone wouldn't sufficiently convey the field's hidden nature, suggesting that someone familiar with the area had chosen it. They possessed an aerial image of the site, showing a tree line and a photo of Laura in a truck at the same location. Laura had sent her sister a picture of herself from that spot. Additionally, phone records for both Tyler and Laura placed them at the location where Laura was later found dead. The prosecution intended to tell the jury that after burying Laura, Tyler drove her car to a Columbia apartment complex, where it was later discovered. They were prepared to call witnesses, including one of Tyler's friends who claimed Tyler asked for a ride from the apartment complex, 
and requested opportunity to present their case before a jury. On September 6, 2018, at 5 a.m., just hours before Tyler's trial was set to begin, his lifeless body was discovered in his jail cell. He had hanged himself inside the Montgomery County Correctional Facility in Rockville, Maryland, leaving behind five suicide letters on the top of his bunk bed. This tragic turn of events meant that the prosecution would not have the chance to outline and prove their case to a jury. Tyler's death marked a sudden and unexpected end to a case that had garnered significant attention due to its complex and disturbing circumstances.